Welcome back to English Classes Online. I am Benjamin. Today's video is on word stress in English. Our focus is on mastering stress rules for easier and better pronunciation. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well so that whenever new videos are uploaded on the channel, you will get instant notifications. Let's dive into the lesson right away. The highlights. What is word stress? Why learn word stress? What are the factors that determine stress? And what are the rules of stress? These are the major subtopics we shall be covering in this lecture. Now, what is word stress? Word stress is the extra force used in pronouncing a word or a syllable to make it sound louder and longer. Word stress is also known as syllable stress because in a word of two or more syllables, stress is always placed on a particular syllable within the word. Examples are as follows. Education. You can see that stress is on the second syllable from the end or the third syllable from the beginning. One, two, three. So that is where we have stress. Education. All right. Now that's how stress is used. Responsibility. You can see that stress is on B. Responsibility. All right. Then democratic. You can see stress placed on cratic there. Democratic. All right. Then banana, banana, all right, banana. You take note, it's not banana, it's not banana, it's banana. Now, there is always a particular syllable that is stressed in a word of two or more syllables, all right. So, that is what stress is really about. Now let's uh, look at why stress is uh, important. Why learn stress? Stress is used to communicate meaning clearly in English speech. Consider the words project as a noun which means a piece of work undertaken and project as a verb which means to communicate clearly. So you, you, you will take note that it's the same word. We are, we, are, we are dealing with the same word project. The stress is used to differentiate between project as a noun, which means a piece of work undertaken, and project as an action, as, as a verb which means to communicate clearly. You can project your ideas, all right, or project your feelings. So that exactly is why stress is very important. So we can see that stress helps us to convey our intended meaning and communicate our ideas accurately and more clearly, all right? If we, uh, if we pronounce this word in the same manner when we want to talk about a piece of work undertaken and when we talk about communicating our feelings of course the listener will be confused all right so stress is really very important in communicating meanings accurately so, misuse of stress leads to mispronunciation of words. That 
of course, is very clear. And when you pronounce, mispronounce words, this distorts the meaning of the word, and the result is a communication breakdown. So you can see that stress is really very important in English speech. And that is why we are devoting this video to discussing stress in English words. Now let's look at factors that determine word stress. Number one is word class or what is traditionally known as part of speech. Now, of course, when one typical example of how word class determines stress is what we call shifting stress. Just as we have already given the example of project and project, you can see that when this word is used as a noun, stress is on the first syllable so the word class of the noun of the of the word the uh, determines where we place stress if it's a noun we place stress on the first syllable if it is a verb we place stress on the second syllable and by the way we shall you know when we discuss the rules we will discover that most two syllable English nouns are stressed on the first syllable, whereas most two-syllable English verbs are stressed on the second syllable. Of course, we this that is the pattern, the stress pattern that we discover in English words, and you, that is one way in which a word class or part of speech determines stress. The second one is syllables, you know. First of all, words are classified phonologically according to the number of syllables they contain. Words that contain one syllable are called monosyllabic words. Words that contain two syllables are called bisyllabic words or disyllabic words. And words that contain two or more syllables are called polysyllabic words or multi-syllabic words. Now, you need to understand that different rules apply to these different classes of words because when we discuss sentence stress, we are dealing with monosyllabic words and when we are looking at words that are stressed in a sentence, they are content words and then the words that are unstressed are called grammatical words or function words or if you like empty words or lesser words so uh, diff uh, many different terminologies are used for these classifications now you can look for a video i have uploaded on simplifying sentence stress and you will discover that there are two classes of words that we consider when we are looking at sentence stress because the content words are those words that carry meaning in themselves and they include nouns, uh, verbs, adverbs and adjectives. So if you, if you call the word man of course, the, the picture of a man is registered in your mind. But if you mention a word like and or in, it, it, it doesn't have any clear meaning in itself except when it is used to, you know, join content words in a sentence. So, monosyllabic words, uh, you know, are stressed according to the kind of word whether they are content words or function words that's the rule that apply to monosyllabic words but when we are dealing with bisyllabic words we discover that a word of two syllable uh, such as uh, let me say
a word like mango, right? It's made up of two syllables. Man, all right? Man, which is the first syllable, of course, that has to be stressed, of course. Man and go, G-O, right? Well, this, this is just it. Man, go. This is a dash, a small dash, all right? So here, we, this word mango is made up of two syllables, man and go. And we have to stress one particular syllable, you see? And because mango is a noun, a two-syllable word that is used as a noun is almost always stressed on the first syllable and so we can see that playing out again in the word mango so you cannot say mango right you have to stress the first syllable if you have to convey the right meaning to the listener all right so most bisyllabic words are governed by different types of rules you know a, a set of rules apply to bisyllabic words and other another set of rules apply to polysyllabic words for instance bisyllabic words are mostly uh, stress is determined in bisyllabic words by a number of factors prefixes right when you have a bisyllabic word that begins with a prefix, you stress the second syllable because the, the prefix is almost always unstressed, except in certain exceptional cases. All right? Then you have word classes or part of speech determining uh, stress most of the time in bisyllabic words. We shall look at this in shifting stress. Polysyllabic words have their stresses, have their stress determined by suffixes, all right? So that is exactly the way it is. So a different set of rules apply to polysyllabic words, a different set of rules apply to bisyllabic words, a different set of rules apply to monosyllabic words. And that is how syllables affect or determine stress placement in English words. Then the second way in which syllables determine stress is the phenomena called strong and weak syllables. You know, when you have uh, a weak vowel in a particular syllable, then of course that syllable is uh, not stressed. Now, look, uh, let's take a look at the word divine the word divine all right divine you can see it now let me try to transcribe divine of course you can see the short e sound all right then vine well, let me get it right here. All right. Divine. Ein. All right. This is N. Okay. So you can see. What we have here is divine, divine, this is V, okay, divine. And because this first syllable contains a weak vowel, which is the short E sound, whereas the second syllable contains a strong vowel, which is a diphthong I, 
So stress is on the second syllable because it has a stronger it is it has a stronger vowel and this syllable is then described as a strong syllable. So you can see that you know strong and weak syllables refer to the the quality of the vowel sound contained in a particular syllable. Don't forget that a syllable is a part of a word. When you talk of a syllable, or a lot of people might ask what exactly is a syllable. I want you to know that a syllable is simply a one unit of sound. And it has one vowel sound with or without consonants. Now, if you look at the the word, uh, look at the, the word the word a is a syllable. Then if we also have the word he. is also a syllable so you can see this so the difference between this and this is that he contains the consonant h and a has no consonant that each of them is a syllable so a, that is exactly a syllable is a unit of sound you know, and it consists of one vowel with or without a consonant. We have seen here that divine contains two uh, syllables. So it is important for you to understand how to break a word into syllables. That's the beginning of, you know, the mastery of stress in English words. Your ability to break a word into syllables. A syllable is a unit of pronunciation. It's a unit of sound. And it's that particular unit of sound that you can articulate in one breath. Of course, when you, uh, uh, when you, uh, you, you always have a, some break, the van, all right? The v ne Shin, divination. So you can see that you always have a, a little pause after each syllable. So that is a unit of sound and that is a unit of pronunciation. That's what a syllable is. Another factor that determines stress placement is affixes. And affixes consists of prefixes and suffixes. Affixes are parts of a word. Alright? The prefixes are uh, the prefixes are the parts of the word that are placed before. You know, for instance, if you have a word like uh, ten. Alright? T U R N. All right. Okay, so it, this doesn't appear quite clear. Now, if you have the word like 10, you know, then you can you can put a prefix before it. You can put the word re and if you add the word re before ten, it becomes return. If you put the suffix ing, what you have is returning. Of course, you you can look for the video I uploaded on word formation and you will discover the rules of word formation how words are formed in english you know 
by the instrumentality of affixes and other uh, factors that come into play in word formation. If you watch that lecture, you will discover uh, how various words are formed in English. And one of the methods of word formation, or what we call a morphological process, is affixation. That is the process of adding prefixes and suffixes to a base word to form a new word, just as I have shown you in beginning with the word ten, which we can call the, the stem or the base. And then we add re to make it return, and we add ing to make it returning. Now, prefixes are unstressed, except in shifting stress. Of course, when we uh, uh, begin to talk about the rules of stress, these things will be clearer to you. So, one of the ways in which prefixes determine stress is that when you have a two-syllable word, that begins with a prefix, for instance, then you are almost always sure that stress will be on the second syllable, except in certain uh, situations. Now, take the word about. Of course, this is a, a prefix, about. When you have about, you have it in about, ago, alone, all right? So that is really a prefix. And to demonstrate that prefixes are always, almost, or almost always unstressed, you can see what happens here. When we have about, about. So this prefix is unstressed. About. So stress is on the second syllable. Even when you have the word return, because this this re is a prefix, return. This re being a prefix is not uh, stressed. So stress is on ten. Return. All right. Suffixes determine stress in polysyllabic words. Most of the time, suffixes determine stress in polysyllabic words. In some cases, you find prefixes also playing some roles in determining stress in polysyllabic words. But most of the time, Suffixes feature prominently in determining stress in polysyllabic words. And when we are talking of polysyllabic words, we are talking about words of three or more syllables. Now, words ending in suffixes such as ION, IAN, IAL, IC have similar place of stress. All right, so you can see exactly how you know um how suff uh, i mean suffixes determine stress for example when you have a, a word ending in the suffix i o n such as education then the rule is the same for a word that ends in i a n Stress is placed on the second syllable from the end of the word. Now, let's look at this. Education. So, you can see this is the second syllable from the end of the word. You can see it here. We count from the end. This is syllable one. This is syllable two. And this is syllable three, and this is syllable four. All right, so and stress is on the second syllable from the end of the word. Now, let's look at a word like 
Okay, let me put it here. A, a word like musician. All right. You look at a word like mu musician. Mu. Z. This is S actually. All right. Okay, a word like musician. Okay, so we start from the end of the word. This is syllable number one, number two, and number three. So stress is on the second syllable from the end of the word. So we stress it on this musician. So you can see how stress is uh, determined by suffixes in polysyllabic words. So that's the way it is. And then we, when we discuss the rules of stress, this will be clearer to you. Okay, so let's uh, go on. What are the rules of stress? So now here we are. The first rule of stress, of course, in no particular order, we are looking at the various sundry rules, all right? There are so many, but we just take some important ones, the ones we can take in this video. Now, number one, if a two-syllable word is used as a noun and also as a verb, stress the first syllable when it is a noun and stress the second syllable when it is a verb. Here we are dealing with shifting stress. And we have it in project, project. Project is a noun, project is a verb. Export, export. Export is a noun, export is a verb. Import, I mean import, import. Then you have other words like object, object, conduct, conduct, produce, produce, com uh, convict, convict, present, present, and so on and so forth. So you, you see that, you know, Stress shifts from the first to the second syllable depending on the word class. And this is a clear example of how word class or part of speech determines stress. This rule exemplifies that. Then rule number two, if a two-syllable word is used as a noun and also as an adjective, stress the first syllable when it is a noun and stress the second syllable when it is an adjective. For example, August, August, adult, adult, and so on and so forth. Rule number three, if a two-syllable word is used as an adjective and also as a verb, stress the first syllable when it is an adjective and stress the second syllable when it is a verb. Example, present, present. Absent, absent, frequent, frequent. So you can see. Now we can make a deduction from this, uh, these rules, and that deduction is what we have in rule number four. And here we are saying that most two syllable nouns and adjectives are stressed on the first syllable but most two-syllable verbs are stressed on the second syllable. For example, we have nouns, two-syllable nouns, window, Monday, 
hostel, etc. All right. If you look at other words, two syllable words that are nouns. So, all right. Whether you are talking of boyhood, manhood, mango, and so on and so forth. Then adjectives. You you have gentle, easy, righteous, proper. You see, these are adjectives, two syllable adjectives, and they are stressed on the first syllable. Then we look at nouns. I mean, we look at verbs that are stressed on the second syllable. Produced, report. Um, all right. Let me look at this. Yes, narrate, transfer. Okay. Dictate, denounce, reject. You can see that all these words are two syllable verbs and they have stress on the second syllable. Then let's look at rule number five. If a two syllable word begins with a prefix, stress the second syllable. Of course, we are already stressed that, you know, uh, prefixes are almost always unstressed but we, we, we shall look at exceptions now examples are disturb unfair unknown return rewire remake enjoy impound observe desist about expand conform between invite etc now note that this rule applies more to verbs, adverbs, and prepositions. The prefix is stressed for a noun that can also be used as a verb. Already we saw that uh, when we talked about rule number one, two, and three. Then examples, exports, imports, convict, object, expense, access, etc. Now, you can see that when a noun, uh, a two-syllable noun, is used as a verb and also as a noun, is always stressed on the first syllable, even if the first syllable is a prefix, all right? Okay, so let's uh, move further to see other rules so here we have rule number let's look at rule number six all right for words that end in the following suffixes they are almost always let me see if we i hope we have not omitted something all right this was rule number yes we we what we did last was rule number five that concerns prefix so we are really in other so let's proceed to rule number six i just wanted to be sure that we are following this according to number so rule number six uh, it, it states as follows for words that end in the following suffixes, they almost always take a stress on the second syllable from the end. I O N, I C, I A L, I A N, I E N, I O U S, I uh, T A N T, and so on. So examples are as follows communication. So you can see. The, the first thing you do is to break the word into syllables, then you count from the end of the word. This is syllable number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Ka, mu, ka, so of course there is another syllable here, so this is one. So we, we have one, two, three, so this is four. Communication. So, second syllable from the end. Supervision. Demac. 
Creation Atomic Dramatic Strategic Democrat Democratic Economic Colonial Proverbial Tutorial Civilian Right Comedian Musician Sufficient Deficient Ingredient Contentious Righteous Important Pollutant So you can see stress is always placed on the second syllable from the end of the word so and the right step the process is that you break the word into syllables and then count from the end and this is what we have here in democratic we have the from the end number one two three four and the rule says that stress is placed on the second syllable from the end of the word so let's check it out when we look at democratic placed on the second syllable that's exactly what we have here so that's how the rule uh, applies all right okay so let's uh, let's wipe this and then we uh, move on to the next rule which will be rule number seven Rule number seven states, for words of three syllables or, or more that end in the suffixes T, Y, N, H, uh, I, Z, E, they almost always have antiponultimate stress. That is, on the third syllable from the end of the word. Examples are captivity, curiosity finality inferiority variability dependability fortunate unfortunate delicate necessitate articulate inoculate inoculate Collect, right? Re, reinvigorate, reinvigorate, vigorate, monopolize, economize, apologize, subsidize, etc. So you can see that when you uh, use the rule, you get the stress uh, on the right syllable again you have to break each word into syllables and then count from the end uh, here in reinvigorate you see that we have um, stress on the third syllable one two three so it is on v and so we cross check it here where do we have reinvigorate? You, we have it in V. So that is exactly the rule. However, these are things that you really need to practice so that you make it part of your linguistic experience. Uh, it doesn't work like every time you want to speak, then you check up a word and you know where stress should be placed no that that's not really the way it works but sometimes when you uh, when you use a word and you are not really sure whether you are getting the stress right then you can look it up in the dictionary or that is why you learn stress so that you will always uh, remember and it comes to a point where really you apply the rules you know even without giving it a thought it just happens uh, you know naturally uh, because when you acquire language of course it becomes internalized it, it becomes part of you it's like something you have acquired 
all right and so you can you can use that linguistic uh, competence without even batting an eye without even giving it a thought at all it just comes naturally but it comes with practice okay so let's look at rule number eight words that end in long e that is double e letters and then that gives you the long e of course when we uh, dealt with um, if you look for uh, if you look for a video i uploaded on vowel sounds of course you will discover the difference between the long e and the short e sound of course the e sound this is the short one and then the long one has do two dots all right in front of it the short one doesn't have any dots and so here when we have ee -E, we are dealing with the long e sound the one with two dots so words that end in long e three syllables or more especially nouns with the long e sound are stressed on the first syllable from the end of the word that means the last syllable that contains uh, the double e that's what we have in absentee detainee nominee reportee etc divorcee all right so such words you know have their stress where you have the long e sound and this pattern of stress is uh, always um, predominantly applicable to words of french origin all right but not in all cases all right now rule number nine stress the fourth syllable from the end for four syllable words and more if the word ends in ism able all right examples are revivalism revivalism revisionism tribalism impossible impalpable Impo improbable all right so you can see words like that you know well uh, there is something else that affect this rule for instance you can see revivalism we have four syllables but stress is on the on the third syllable from the end but the rule that applies here is not a rule of stressing the fourth syllable it has to do with the rule of stressing the syllable that comes immediately after a prefix all right it applies to words uh, ending in ism and words ending in able and even able now let me uh, uh, let's look at these two words revivalism you can see that re is a prefix immediately after the prefix the next syllable is stressed the same thing applies here immediately after the prefix the next syllable is also stressed revisionism revivalism now when you look at this particular prefix uh, that comes even before this one impossible so immediately after the prefix you the next syllable is stressed the same thing happens in impalpable improbable right and so on and so forth now if you have a word also like Uh, 
Well, um, that will be a topic for another day so that we do not um, prolong this uh, lecture uh, beyond measure. But when you are talking of different other examples, all right, like um, the ones that actually do not apply, uh, where the prefix, uh, when you have ism, and then the the word does not begin with a prefix, you stress the first syllable. That's what you have in, you know, uh, nationalism, radicalism, and so on and so forth. But that's uh, a topic for another day. Let's uh, look at the last one. And this is supposed to be 10. This is a typo. So this is rule number 10. For words of four, five, and six syllables that end in able or able and are introduced by the following prefixes in, income, in, ad, incon, in, the, they are almost always stressed on the syllable that follows the prefix beginning uh, of a word all right so now this is the rule i was already referring to it uh, it applied to some of the example we saw in the previous uh, in the previous um, rule but here we have it incorruptible so inco is the is the prefix here immediately after that we have incorruptible then incompatible incompatible income yeah this repeated incompatible well this is really uh, this where stress is supposed to be and again incon is actually the uh, prefix and so inadmissible so you can see inadmissible incredible so your ability to uh, find out where the uh, the prefix begins and ends then immediately after that that's where you put stress so incompatible so here you see this is a, a mistake so what we have is we place these two as income then per all right So you can see stress is here, incompatible. The same thing, uh, of course, this is a repetition. All right. So that's the way it is. And uh, that's really how it has been uh, in today's video. Uh, we have been looking at word stress in English. All right, and I believe we have done justice to the topic. We have looked at, you know, what word stress is all about and why it is important for us to learn word stress. We looked at the factors that determine stress. And lastly, we looked at the rules of stress. I hope you have learned things that will you know help you to improve uh, the quality of your pronunciation so that you will be able to stress you stress accurately in order to communicate accurately your intended meaning 
if you have any questions arising from this lecture you can uh, leave your questions in the comments section if you have any comments you can also leave your comments in the comments section as well if you have any suggestions as to which uh, particular topic uh, you are having problems with and would like us to discuss in subsequent videos do not hesitate to mention that also in the comments section if you have enjoyed today's video like the video and share the video with your friends and relations don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon as well so that you receive uh, regular notifications in respect of new videos that are uploaded so this is where we draw the curtain thank you for being part of today's uh, lecture see you in the next class and bye for now